Golf Green here Pig is just opening up and there are a few other things happening in the grow space so I thought I would show you what's inside. A beautiful spike two blooms here on my Rincolalia Cattleya Golf Green Hair Pig. Welcome to this video. I thought that before things get really, really tight and a tight squeeze in my growth space when the temperatures are going to drop radically, we might take advantage of the space that I do have at the moment because a lot of the orchids are outside and see what is going on, why I don't bring other orchids like I have now indoors to the beautiful great outdoors. Well, basically, I have been rotating orchids so that the workload lessens, seeing as we've had quite a few beautiful sunny weeks. I've been able to take one time orchids out, the other time other orchids out, the other ones stay indoors. I'm finding it difficult with my hips, let's put it that way. I don't want to go into further detail, but I'm finding it very difficult to carry and move around using something that is delicate and could easily be dropped. <laughs> because of the hips. That is why I have these orchids inside today, whereas most of the times all my blooming orchids will stay indoors because even though it is very, very sparse, it is my indoor blooming alley anyway. Brassocatlia vinosa Wabash Valley is still looking beautiful. It has dropped one bloom, but still. Oh wow, the longevity has been remarkable and that beautiful fragrance of lemony sugar has also been permeating the growth space at night. My golf green hair pig as such has not started its fragrance. These blooms are just opening. They've got a lot, a lot of work to do to unfurl. <laughs> All that frilly gorgeousness has as yet to make itself, you know, presentable. But it is beautiful that these bloomed out they were on the top shelf up here since November. I did not move that pot at all just to make sure that maybe we get lucky and get those buds to bloom. It was amazing. I'm so happy that worked. So I have Mailman on the left. There's Dinard Blue Heaven, Peggy Ruth Carpenter. I believe that is Happy Holiday up there. Now away from the blooming alley, it's finished blooming. Sologeny Lime Bay. And then here I've got Lori Mortimer and my little fairy, which is also pushing some buds. That's nice for, but the growth is not impressive. So we've got some work to do with that. So that is like the top shelf. If I go around the corner here, there's my Dawiana and hanging like dreadlocks, excuse just the visual of the pot, like dreadlocks here is my Parkinsoniana all the way down to the second shelf down here and then you can see the beautiful Nafritz Alex Poli with its fabulous blooms all the intricacies and the detail on that fantastic got one two three four five spikes this one I have to be super mindful of because yeah it infringes upon the space that I need when I bring orchids inside but let's just go and check out the blooms first. We've also got Dendrobium tetragonum variety Giganteum in bloom with its incredible fragrance of acrid aluminum being cut, that hot fragrance, very acrid in the nose, and then a note of jasmine. <laughs> huh. Competing with my beautiful, funky, weird, wonderful, quirky Neostylus Lucneri Blue. That doesn't cease to amaze. All the blooms here are weird, fused, etc. Enjoying a bit of sunshine because the angle of the sun is low. Yeah, I'm happy with the growth progress of this one. While we're down here though, I also want to show off my beautiful Jumelia Aborescence. This orchid, oh, I love it for its resilience, its resistance, its willingness to grow and perform. Oh, I love it so much. It's still growing well and you can see it gets a little bit of sunshine even during the winter because I do not move this orchid outside at all. And then I've got my two Tolumnias in semi-hydro right here, which I would like to do a separate video on to update you on those. But Carmen is in bloom. That's amazing. This fan grew in semi-hydro. Very happy to see those. 
And pomegranate next door has two spikes just starting to bloom out. I'm waiting for pomegranate to bloom so that we can at least get an update video on how it's going in semi-hydro and we can see some blooms. Down here, I have an assortment of orchids on the lower shelf. I do not move any of my orchid tops out because of all the water splashing. The saucers are filled with water, so I'm mindful of that. But you can see that they're getting sunlight back here. And considering that the cooler temperature slows them down, I'm not moving them back and forth. The risk of getting roots to get damaged with me moving them around is too high. They're safer there. My Mr. City Eye is also holding on to those spikes, still not desiccating, but it's starting on a new route, which is great. I hope you can see that. And I've got my Van der Glossen spike back there, going down, not too pleased. It's not coming up and growing towards the sun, but I'm not going to force it either. I'm watching what it's going to do. I can't lift it up, otherwise I will probably snap it. So we'll see how that blooms out. And then, of course, it's Phalaenopsis Spike Central, finally in the grow space. They are all progressing beautifully. All the fowls with the spikes are doing really, really well. Darwinara Blue Charm right here has also got a spike. That is brilliant. And it looks like I'm going to get more than two blooms that I had anticipated. And down here, I have the weaklings, you know, Sagarit Wax. I've got work to do with her in order to save her. Otherwise, I'm going to lose this orchid. And resting, not because they're resters, but because they are not moving, they're not growing. Got Golden Cella back there, Rhinchodendrum Cabalgata in Verde back there. Seeing as they're not moving, they are on the bottom shelf. And in the back, I've got Sunya Green right away, tucked in the corner behind the Coilostylus ciliaris or Steadii. That also just stays here all the time because it's not growing, it's not doing anything. It's too cold for this orchid, so I'm letting it rest in the corner. So these four in the corner, they only get what the day gives them. And then I just make sure that they are not drying out too much with their reservoirs. And on the bottom here, right on the floor, I've got my Guatemalensis. The sheath over here is starting to get chubby, which is wonderful. Hoping that maybe in the spring we can see some gorgeous bloom. And also my big Sologeny Pandorata which grew a beautiful new growth in 2022. But because of the lack of light, we didn't get to see any blooms. But the orchid is alive, que es muy importante. To the right of that, prime location right here is, you know, right up against the glass, full sun when the sun is out. There is my Leptotis bicolor, and we are getting some spikes. I hope you can see that. Some spikes are already starting to form. Here is the Maxima from Matt by Nature. The roots are growing into the pot very slowly. I'm not sure about the health of this orchid. Very suspicious about the brown of the roots. I don't want to jinx it. She's growing another new growth, so patience. We'll just wait on that. And they assorted seedlings and people. <laughs> recovering here and hopefully gonna get their groove on is my Chantilly Lace Twinkle that I've never been too pleased about its performance. But the seedlings down here are just holding on and tidying over. Our next shelf up right against the glass. Here's my Dendrobium Monificum, Inobulbum Monificum. The growth has matured, not getting burned. That's how weak the sun is. But look at that beautiful new growth. <laughs> Oh, it's wonderful. I love the size jump compared to previously. Much more fat and chubby. It's not quite done yet. It has yet to fill out a little bit more. Positive, positive news. And then here I have some assorted orchids. The Iricolor is holding on, thankfully. Growing roots. Main focus right now, keeping those roots alive. And then here I've got my lowy eye, my Dimophorcus lowy eye. And that beautiful root that started early in winter of 2022 is progressing and going nicely into the pot, which I really like because I removed some lecker, allowing it to find its way in. And now I am happy to say that it is not creeping across the surface. 
My Labukensis is also still holding on, potted it into semi-hydro, self-watering. That one root is looking a little bit tired and possibly has failed in the pot. But when I wet the microfiber over there, that root greens up and absorbs nicely and it stays wet for several days, which is really good. I'm cautiously positive about this working out. We'll have to wait and see when temperatures rise again. And really, really on the top shelf here are all my reed stem epidendrum hybrids. You have to always be mindful of the mealybugs. So there's a lot of foliage in here and it's four different plants, but more predominantly, we've got buds on the Yucca's of the story. Look at that. At least I hope you can see them. There you go, they're looking beautiful. And I've got spikes on the other ones, but they are gonna take their sweet time before they actually bloom out. And in your face, in your face, you can see the shadow here of my Rincolalia digbiana. Yeah, woohoo, she is coming into bloom ever so slowly, but you can see the positioning right up against the glass, the hottest and most brightest space I can provide. And the second lead in the back, it's going to be difficult to show because of the sun glaring. Sorry about that. That second lead tucked away behind there, that sheath is also fattening up. So 2023, two blooms, two leads on the Digbiana, which is awesome. The last time that happened was in 2020 that I had two blooms. So happy days, or maybe 2021. Anyway, she skipped one or two years without giving me two blooms on both her leads. Here we are, it's happening again. And of course, as per usual, by the time she has successfully, you know, recovered from the stress of a radical repot, it will be time to address her again. I might have to get her a bigger pot so that we don't have to wait another year or two for the leads to bloom. My antenatum that we're looking at at the moment is just gorgeous because of its foliage. Really have to be watching for mealybugs here. She's had several sprays over the past months, just making sure no caterpillars think that she is a gorgeous treat during the winter because that's what happened last year. This year I've been seeing mealybugs, just trying to be mindful of the fact that no, I want my antenatum to grow. Probably not as tall as she could grow because my conditions are, no, nope, she doesn't like what's going on temperature-wise at all, but she has prime location, so I'm being very mindful of what's going on. I love this crisp, clear green color. It's gorgeous. And then I've got my pseudo epidendrum here, the hybrid that struggled with some mites in 2022 would be the first time that this orchid hasn't aborted its growing point. So I've got some progress going on there. An extremely weak orchid that I got in 2018. The fact that she is still alive. Yeah, I would say I can take credit for that. <laughs> but whether we're going to see blooms this year or not, I do not know. But at least I've managed to stop the growing point from drying, dying off. And in the back, I've got Millery chilling out. Nope, not outside because weak. Don't want to push it. All righty. So back here as well is there's also more complex hybrid Phalaenopsis. All the spikes are starting to point towards the light, just the way we like it. Some have started branching since we last discovered them. Ninja Yellow. I wonder if she's going to hold on to her blooms this year. I have moved her from her location last year where she bought, where she had bud blast. Uh, we'll see if this works. The hot kiss blasted its buds in this location, so I've switched them around. <laughs> hot kiss is back on the shelf and I've put ninja yellow here and see if they can both handle it better. And down here is my Aurora 3.0. She's already blasted one bud, but I've got two spikes going, so we will we will get that beautiful fragrance from this orchid. And this spike is branching. And I just spied a little bit of action here on my Tetragonum, which is awesome because that means more blooms are on the way. I didn't show you the new growth starting on my Durigan in the back there, but there is a new growth starting and my Siamese doll Kiwi is just chilling. And here is my Stamfordianum 
also much, much better than 12 months ago, chilling out. Hopefully, we can get this orchid to strength in 2023 and we will be well on our way. Okay, oh, I just saw something here in my Nafitz Alex Poli. Check this out. Hello. There's a new growth starting already. And where there's one, eventually there might be another and another one. <sighs> the fact that I am going to be experiencing the coldest temperatures ahead for the winter of 2023 so far. When I see growth like that starting, I'm almost like, yeah, we're heading into spring, but no, we still have a long way to go. Oh. Roy Tokunaga is also inside. I'm not moving it right here because obviously it buds and we're hoping to get that to bloom. I'm very pleased. We're struggling with Roy Tokunaga in 2022 and I think now we can just leave the orchid alone. But yeah, didn't appreciate the repot. I've got my little purple gem Aida and rescue, still under rescue, still in ICU. Even though they're growing roots, I still haven't figured out what I want to do with them. So they're staying in rescue mode until I figure out what I can do so I don't lose them again. If I go in and out of focus, I am sorry. I'm trying to handle the camera very, very slowly. So my only Leonis here is holding on. It's growing a new root right there in the back. My Paphiopadlum Iona. The buds are starting to peek out of the protective sheathing. I have to get a little bit longer, but there's still time. My Fastuosa here has not started on any spikes. Maybe she'll skip a year. She's, she is not really growing the roots the way I would like her to. I may need to think about repositioning her. Now is not the time. Ha! Huh. Gotta watch out for that one. Don't want to lose it. It's been with me for years. And yeah, you just don't want to lose an orchid after having it for such a long time. Okay, so I'm going to swing you around. Oh, before I do that, I just want to show you that my Lundii is starting on buds. I got plenty of growths on the Lundii. There should be a nice blooming. I may need to move that pot so that the bloom can bloom out properly. If I bash that accidentally without paying attention, that bud's going to be history. But there's buds everywhere. I wonder if I can pick this leaf off. Not yet. There's another bud right back in here tucked in there enjoying some sun. Okay, let me move you around. I'm just going to put my hand in front of the camera because of the sun so it doesn't blind you because we're going to be facing that straight on as I move. And then here I have my Gold Coast just to give it as much light as possible because I'm trying to see if I can avoid brown spotting cold damage to appear on the new growth. I've already got the pitting. So that would immediately turn brown. So it's getting a hot, hot place where the sun shines. Hot, hot being relative. The sun is not hot enough to make those leaves warm up. And my gorgeous little lutein blanc. Ha! Huh. Let's pause for the blooms. Aren't they pretty? Aren't they pretty? Oh, they're so cute even from the back. Oh, I love, I love, I love. And she smells so delicious. Got the new growths for next year. Yeah, I love this one. She even has a spike tucked in down here. All right. My Neo Falcata collection, I will do an update on those. As you can see, spoiler alert, things are okay. Things are terrible. And over here, my Santhina, she is growing a single root down into the pot. Mm -hmm. There's hope. That's all I need to know. And we're going to have a look at closer look at the Tolumnius that I got from Anonymous. And then here's a whole gaggle of ICU that I'm trying to bring over the winter so that I can pot them up in the spring, especially my Gyra Kiku pieces. Well, they're doing okay. I know it looks nasty in there, but it's been a while that they've been in there. And then, of course, my little bloom and shiny eye baby. That was a single bulb that broke off the mother plant. Chugging along, no roots. Figuring out how this little guy is going to grow some roots that will stay viable. So there must be something in the pot 
otherwise she would have collapsed a long time ago and I just can't see it. Got a bud here on my American Hybrid. Gonna do a maintenance video on her. Alexandra, my beautiful, <laughs> well, it's actually my daughter's orchid that did not appreciate the switch from lava rock into leka, but now we have a spike. Actually, it's a branch from an older spike and a newer spike, so she's coming around. She's gonna get repositioned later on in 2023. We are very, very close to seeing what Suppressa looks like. Busy, busy, busy orchid. One branch, two new spikes. Growing the leaf continuously. The, roots, the root growth has stopped. And then Mini Mark. Look, Mini Mark has opened. The first bloom. There's another spike growing in the back there. You can see that somewhat coming out of the leaf. And then, of course, the main spike coming out here. Oh, this is the extension of the oldest spike. So if you have a mini mark, don't cut the spike off and see if it extends. Its new spike has not gotten to that point yet, but also growing a gorgeous new root, which is amazing. What I want to show you as well is my Zorro Vivian, my Dory Tehanopsis. Muy importante, that thing I hope that is showing on screen. It's sticking out at the base. I have very damp microfiber around the base. I need that root to go into the media because this orchid needs a root for sure. But look, we've got one somewhat damaged leaf in the back still. We got another leaf that looks a little bit pitted. And we've got a new leaf coming that's looking marvelous. I would like to keep it that way. And then let me scooch you up. Here are the little fowls. This is the Keiki, Walter Jr. The first bloom is going to be opening shortly. Here's Aurora 2.0. We've got a spike taking its sweet time to actually develop very, very slow. And then here is little Vega Cecilia. Even if she grows a spike, I won't let this one bloom. We still need to actually get her established, but she's looking so much better than she did 12 months ago. This is Maxi, little white Phalaenopsis. I'm a bit concerned about the leaves going that yellow color right at the stem. There's nothing I can do about intervention at this point in time. They are not popping off. Just keeping my breath, just holding my breath and fingers crossed that everything in there is okay has a spike, it could be a stress spike. When I can take them all out, I'm going to study them properly. I can't see any signs of stem rot. I can't, so just keeping fingers crossed there. My pulchra is okay. I still haven't addressed that orchid because of its root growth. I am not entirely sure how I want to cultivate that orchid, whether I do want it in Lekka self-watering or whether I'm going to do the semi-hydro setup with lava rock. The root growth is insane. I mean, it is beautiful, but it is not around the base. It comes out all over the place, as you can see, right up the stem and doesn't necessarily want to grow down. There you go. Proof is in the pudding. Beautiful roots growing, but going aerial. So <laughs> my keiki, I'm observing that very, very closely. Just make sure that stays alive. And here's Gratrixianum in its peacock structure, looking awesome. This one is from Fernanda Nacimento Orchids and Succulents. This leaf here I have released from the peacock structure just to make sure that I can see that it's actually able to hold itself up. But I like to keep it a little bit tucked in just because if the wind blows, I don't want it to be kinked. Normally the door is closed if it's very, very windy, but you never know. I'm not home and something happens. We don't want that. Ha, star of the show much? Let's take a moment here. And, and just breathe it in. Cinnamon and spicy ginger cookies with some beautiful molten sugar on top. Yeah, that's her fragrance. And 
something else. Let me just, oh, no, the sun won't interfere. Okay. Let me just show you something else before we wrap this up. I've been babying, babying these buds. This is my Crestwood Tomorrow Star. Three buds. <laughs> the spur has as yet to release. You can see, I hope, right here, the spur is still tucked into the bract and the other spurs have released. So there's the spur of that bud and there's the spur of that bud. Look like little comet, something out of Avatar. And right in the back, one bud is enjoying sunshine. Just hope you can see that. That is my bossery. All the spurs have released there and we are hopefully going to have some amazing blooms very, very soon. So that's what's inside and why. And well, tomorrow the whole thing will change again because obviously, like I said, I'm rotating. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like, share it around. Let people know that someone in southern Spain is growing orchids and really, really fighting hard to get them to bloom, to survive winter without any kind of kit and caboodle to help them out will be amazing because even though it is difficult, it can be done. Maybe that encourages somebody else saying, I can't afford all the extras. Well, neither can I. So if that person would be inspired by this video, please share it around. I so appreciate it. And if you haven't subscribed and you're inspired by the fact that I'm doing this on the raw, literally, no fancy nothing, please subscribe because there are failures when doing it this way but their experience that comes from it, it is exponential and I'm sharing that on this channel. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you for your support. Thank you for liking the video, sharing it, and thank you for subscribing. I hope you have yourself a beautiful day on that one condition though, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.